guys, how are you? Welcome to the Untitled Tarot. So today we're gonna do a reading for the fixed sign. So if you have Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius placements, this one's gonna be for you. If you're looking for individual zodiac sign readings, you can find them in our Patreon community. You can also find them on Vimeo. I'll link all that information down for you in the description box for your convenience. This week, we're gonna work with the Witches Oracle and we're also working with the Fountain Tarot as well. And of course, I have your Shufflemancy songs for you. It feels as though predominantly like what we wanna look at is like your spiritual life right now. It's as if there are some blockages, some challenges that you're experiencing in your, in your life and you're trying to physically work through them. But the solution may actually come through a little bit more spiritual development, figuring out how to mold, how to use your energy better, figuring out how to protect your energy better understanding the process of transmutation for instance Saturn just moved into Pisces and so it really feels like it's asking you to bring your practice sort of back down to basics and start reintegrating some more foundational aspects of spiritual development that maybe you learned once upon a time but like you haven't really been keeping up with like to your detriment right so when I put on your shuffle Mancy the first song that came through was energy vampire by witchy prophet now, this is a really good artist and it's a really good song, but Energy Vampire isn't exactly like the the song or the energy that like we really want to see in our lives, right? Now, if you feel, for instance, that you are more tired than you should be, you're more foggy than you should be, of course, check your health, make sure everything is good with you. But if you're feeding yourself properly, if you're watering yourself, if you're getting enough sleep, but for some reason, it's the feeling is sort of like grimy. It's kind of like sticky. Like when you've been outside all day and you come home and you're like, oh, I really need to take a shower. It's that type of energy that it feels like the fixed signs are in currently. There's sort of this feeling of Saturn wanting to come in and like give you a scrub down before it like sends you back into the world. So there might be like a small period of time. Like let's say four days is coming to mind. Like there might be four days where you kind of want to sit down the fixed signs you want to reflect you want to do some spiritual cleansings sit down with your team and like really allow yourself to get back down to basics bring your practice to a very grounded place and just re draw the boundary lines right saturn talks all about boundaries whereas it's in pisces right now and pisces is a sign that is sort of boundary less as the last sign in the zodiac right pisces casts a very wide net whereas saturn really wants us to start drawing out some borders so it feels like that is like a big emphasis for you right now and you might be surprised how a little bit of energy management a little bit of spiritual hygiene taking a little bit of advice from saturn might actually improve your physical experience experience right now when it comes to energy vampirism it's important right now for the fixed signs to really sit down and think about what is an energy suck in your life now this can absolutely be people around you you could have energy vampires around you or you could just have regular people around you who are really draining your energy with their pessimism right we all have bad days we all have bad days but if you have people around you that are always complaining there's always a problem there's always a drama and when you leave those conversations when you leave those activities that you're engaging in with them if you find yourself sort of drained or grumpy or you're just not feeling very good pay attention to that similarly pay attention to your environment as well what spirits are taking up occupancy in your space what spirits are you working with right because spirits and entities can also act as an energy suck as well this might be a really good time to do maybe like a personal accounting of your spirit team of how well your physical environment is protected as well as what people in your life seem to be kind of draining just like a lot of your enthusiasm and a lot of your energy something to also take into consideration is social media right i think even from a non-spiritual aspect we can consider um social media the constant influx of the news to be a form of psychological warfare right sometimes you got to turn the news off for a minute sometimes you have to change the channel sometimes you have to take like a little social media break because as we know we go on we just want to watch a funny video the next thing you know we're doom scrolling we're getting mad about something if there are certain creators that you're watching that are very like triggering to you right or are very draining to you 
these are things that you want to pay attention to, right? Energy vampires come in many shapes and many forms. And it's really important for you fixed signs to really be paying attention to what is sort of filling your cup and what is draining it, right? So the first two oracle cards that we have coming out for you are Aradia and the Neophyte heritage and study when it comes to heritage and study it feels like it's really important for you guys to be paying attention to patterns of behavior when you normally get to this spot in your journey if you zoom out and you just look at the cycles of your experiences in the world and in your spiritual life when you normally get to this spot what normally happens similar to you normally have a breakdown before you have a breakthrough when you get to a new level you encounter a new devil by reminding yourself of the heritage of the cycle of the patterns that not only you have experienced but also how they link up to the patterns and experiences of your ancestors of your parents of your friend group pay attention to that stuff because it's going to allow you to move a little bit differently now Aradia is largely considered to be the queen of witches, especially in Roman mythology. And when we're looking at neophyte, a neophyte is a novice, right? A neophyte is a student. It's similar to a page. And as the queen of witchcraft and magic, and as we have a student right here, it feels like for the fixed signs, a lot of you are being invited in to sort of like a new spiritual or magical initiation. In a way, it feels as though when you first had your awakening, you you excelled really quickly you were learning a lot of information you were tapping into for many of you like the fullness of your abilities but you were never given any of those abc's those really key foundational pieces it's one thing to tap into or acquire power it's another thing to know how to sustainably and responsibly use it and i wonder if some of those foundational pieces were missing right kind of in your initial education or your initial development you figured out very quickly how to astral project how to um kind of travel throughout dimensions how to do journeying how to contact your spirit guides how to contact deities how to work magics but maybe you weren't taught proper energy boundaries. Maybe you weren't taught um, how to transmute energy, right? Um, maybe you weren't taught how to banish. Maybe you weren't taught, um, you know, basic psychic hygiene and psychic defense, right? It feels as though like you had your awakening and you jumped right to like the 400 level class and you totally missed for some of you like the one-on-one. -on -one. So if you are feeling as though, especially your radio is coming through a little bit like a pushy guide. If you have a pushy guide or ancestor or a deity right now that really seems to be sort of hounding you under this Saturnian influence about sitting down, doing the research, um, kind of uh, investing into these foundational pieces. And in your mind, you're thinking, why? I already did that. I already know how to do it. Ask yourself, how well did you learn how to do it? Did we maybe kind of skip through those initial those initial lessons, those initial courses, right? The good thing about Aradia is that it feels like there is some kind of guide or mentor or assistance in helping you do this. But because the neophyte is such a dedicated student, it does feel as though you are being invited into this initiation process. But also it is important that you allow yourself to commit to it, to follow through, to sort of stick the landing right especially when it comes to that first song right energy vampire basic spiritual protections everyone wants to know how to hex their enemy right everyone's waiting for you know karma you know karma is a cat sitting in my lap and all of that's really all of that's fun and great and all of that's really wonderful right but at the same time like how many of you know how to kind of transmute negativity or the evil eye like into something positive for you like how do you know that your magics are sort of rooted in and they're sustainable how do you keep a spell going over a certain period of time right how do you protect and deflect from that energy to begin with before it even gets to your house these are those foundational pay uh, uh these are those foundational pieces and they involve getting into a little bit more of the nitty gritty for some of you this also has to do with a form of divination she's sitting in front of this mirror right which is a form of sort of 
mirror work, portal work, but also divination. It's a form of scrying. So for some of you, you're also really being invest, uh, really being invited under the Saturnian influence to invest more time and energy and study into your divination practices, right? It's as if some of you have had cards for a very long time and like you still don't know what they mean and that's okay. But it feels like Aradia is coming forward and saying like, let's pull out the books, let's get a journal, let's get a pen, like really let's start giving ourselves that strong foundation. Let's start building the bricks of this house. We have the couches, we have the throw pillows, we have the TV, right? We have the elevator up to the 24th dimension, but where are the floorboards? Yes. Now, the second song that you got on the shuffle, Mancy, was Memory by this band called Sugar Coat. I might be dating myself. It's a very popular song when I was in high school. And there are quite a few lyrics in that song that feels like it really connects to what we're saying. The first one is, um, this could never start, we could fall apart, and I'd be your memory. Now, that gives me the impression, as I said before, that if you zoom out and you kind of look at the patterns and the cycles of your development, that there have been like several invitations to sit down and just get like a little bit more specific, gain a little bit more context, get a little bit more education um, and experience in these certain areas, in these certain skills that you have. But it almost feels like in the past, like something would pop up or you'd get distracted. You go, no, I don't really need that. I'm good, right? Again, not really following through. It's that feeling of, well, I did really well on my homework. I don't have to take the test. It's that sort of energy, right? This could never start. We could fall apart and I'd be your memory. It's the idea that you are being invited to evolve into a higher caliber of spiritual agency you are being invited to step into a higher caliber of independence you're also from what i see from your other cards you're being offered like a significant um, how do I want to phrase this? Significantly more spiritual information than you have had access to in the past. And as all, always, it's all free will. You don't have to sit down. You don't have to commit yourself to this. You don't have to go through this process. You don't have to do anything that you want. Take it with a grain of salt. And this whole reading could just be a memory. It won't matter. We'll just move on to the next thing. No harm, no foul, right? But if we never start, like we're, we're never finished, right? Um, another thing that they said in the song is, um, let's get back to where we lasted. There's sort of this feeling of if you look back at some point in your spiritual journey, you were really on your shit. Like you were really taking care of your spiritual health. You were really dedicated to your practice. Like you were very tapped into yourself as an individual. You felt really connected to the magic, to the universe, to the all. And like, how good did that feel? How stable? stabilizing how empowering right like you felt really capable because you were really tapped in and really engaged and again there's an invitation to kind of go back to that or rebirth that into your current experience right there's also another line in this song where he goes um losing half a year waiting for you here um i'd be your anything Right? So that sort of feels like it's coming from this Aradia character, right? A deity, a god, a spirit, maybe it's your higher self as well, saying like, losing half a year, like we've been sitting here for a while, <laughs> like hoping that you'd come and ask us for assistance, right? On how to develop these things that you need as an individual, as a spirit practitioner, um, as someone trying to make their way through the world, right? And we've just been waiting here, like, killing time just waiting for you and I love that part of like I'd be your anything really talking about like the prowess and the mutability of your spirit team how like there really isn't anything that they couldn't teach you do what I mean it doesn't matter if it's like in the physical world if it has to do with money if it has to do with business if it has to do with you know your health if it has to do with you know your spiritual abilities if it has to do with navigating friendships what you're gonna eat for dinner like they do anything for you there's you know so often in you know our spiritual lives we will ask for things like abundance please i would love more abundance in my life but we don't always ask for the skills needed to obtain that abundance or how to maintain that abundance or how to grow it right and so there is something about shifting the asking from the end goal instead to asking for the skills or the qualities or the development that will actually allow you to gain those things that you want to maintain them and to continue to prosper them now sort of moving forward 
we have the cave and we have the lady coming up next right so it almost feels like with this neophyte you're being asked to kind of sit down in a much more committed and intentional process um to develop these things you need spiritually to overcome that which is troubling you physically with this cave and the lady the lady is the embodiment of the high priestess there's a lot of like it is the witch's oracle but when we're looking at aradia as the queen of witches the lady as the embodiment of the high priestess more of that pisces energy we also later on have the queen of el femme which is an aspect of the morrigan or um really any kind of like triple goddess right and when we're looking at triple goddesses they can typically move from the maiden the mother and the crone Again, really emphasizing the fact that you are ready to evolve into sort of your next epitaph as a spiritual being, as a spiritual practitioner. So this cave retreat, it feels like sort of that four or five days where you hide behind the veil and you get this information that you need, much like the hermit learning how to stoke your own fires, gaining a deeper sense of wisdom so that way you can come forward as the high priestess that you really and truly are. With the bat coming up next, it says a rebirth in consciousness as well. So there's a new spiritual perspective that feels much more neutral and much more solidified than what you have now. There is sort of, for some of you, there is this message here that like you have experienced perhaps some challenging or perhaps even some scary things spiritually or in the world and now especially with energy vampire being that first song it feels like in many ways like you have an inability to spiritually protect yourself right because when i'm looking at neophyte and this cave this retreat card right when we look about a retreat we can look at this card as like the four of swords i'm gonna go on a retreat i'm gonna take a vacation i'm gonna rest i'm gonna think about things and reflect and work on these different aspects of myself recharge my batteries absolutely but if you think about like in terms of a battle right and if you have an energy vampire around you or if you're dealing with spiritual dissidents or if you have spirits in your house and you don't know what to do with them right any of the myriad of, of things that could be sucking your energy it feels as though because of perhaps a lack of development and definitely a lack of confidence in your own magic right it feels like you consistently retreat it's like in a battle and it's not going well and the commander screams to the rest of the army like retreat fall back fall back and then there's this energy of hiding here pisces as well is sort of the houdini of zodiac signs pisces is an escape artist whereas saturn really wants us to confront our shit right and so in a lot of ways, it also feels like with you standing in front of this mirror, you're really being asked to look at yourself and determine on your own if perhaps there is a little bit of like cowardice that you have, right? There is a little bit of fear. There is a little bit of like a fear of confrontation or a lack of confidence in being able to spiritually protect yourself or set those boundaries and stick to them, claim dominance over your space, right? Um... Saturn doesn't want you to hide anymore. Saturn wants you to be able to kind of stand boldly as the high priestess, understanding from a very neutral perspective what energies serve you, what energies don't, what, you know, spirit or energy or person is a friend and is a foe, how to deal with it appropriately, right? With this rebirth in consciousness, moving you out of fight and flight and moving you into a place where you are able to assess and digest does that make sense what i like in this card when i first pull it i'm always so drawn to her because obviously like she's very captivating she really draws our eye in but if we look around her in her environment we can see on the one side we all we have this beautiful ocean right the ocean talks about sort of the psychic and the spiritual world it talks about our emotions it talks about our subconscious i like that the swan is here one swans are very symbolic of aphrodite energy they're very symbolic of love but if you've ever met a swan you know they're like deeply deeply protective right and so there is a necessity here to make sure that you are fostering an environment emotionally within um like your spiritual and kind of psychic life that is loving and conducive to you but also um with the ability to protect yourself when needed because you also have a blade you have a sword on this side as well which is being able to very quickly slice and dis and um dissect any illusion any delusion um anything that is misleading 
mean to you, anything that could throw you down a rabbit hole, anything that can inspire fear, any of those little earworms that get stuck in your head. Because on the other side, we have this beautiful plot of land that's just ready and ripe for new seeds to be planted in it. There's even a little bee, right? We have this weed here, very symbolic of the Empress card, right? The fertility. And so there's something about needing to have more agency, more independence, and the confidence to set energetic boundaries. So that way you can create a really healthy, happy, and peaceful um, internal world, spiritual world, which will then allow you to more effectively plant seeds and grow harvests in your physical reality. It widens your cup. It widens your ability to receive the fruits of your labor, right? Some of this also has to do with like emotional management as well. Some of you, to be perfectly frank, are not very good at managing your own emotions and that is a vulnerability to you because at any point in time there could be an energy vampire or there could be a person something on social media a spirit they can come in and they can push your button maybe it's sadness maybe it's loneliness maybe it's anger but there is a sense that these other factors in the world right and spiritually they understand your weaknesses better than you do and so you don't have enough insulation from it they can come in they can push an emotional button next thing you know your energy your emotions are getting very big and it's very easy to pick fruit off that tree right so part of this rebirth in consciousness is also trying to get you to see how being afraid of confrontation, um, not having the confidence to assert those boundaries um, is a disservice to you and how often it's very easy to look around and go, that person's a problem, the spirit's a problem, this thing's happening, the astrology's not on my side, when really it comes from a lack of planning, it comes from a lack of development, and it comes from a lack of having those foundational pieces. And I say all of that with the reminder that it's difficult in many ways to find the resources, most people, when they have a spiritual awakening, they don't have like a mentor. They don't have an elder. They don't have someone to teach them these things. So I give you all of this advice while also recognizing that a lot of this is not your fault, that you don't know these things. But it is your responsibility to seek out the education, especially when it is being provided to you, right? When it's been waiting to be received and accepted by you for a long time. Now, as part of like this new perspective... What I also think is cool in this bat card is like when you think about bats, they're, they're a creature that people oftentimes associate with something that is dark or scary or dangerous, right? It's like these vampire bats. When in reality, like most bats eat fruit. They're actually not that scary. They're not dangerous. They're not hazardous to people, which kind of goes to show that like some of the spiritual blockages, um, even things in your physical life that you've been having a hard time kind of um, getting over that hurdle, it's not going to be as bad or as painful or as difficult as you really think it is, right? It's just the, the fear comes from feeling unequipped, but the tools are there for you. Now, we have a serpent coming up next, right? And this says what? This is power. What's interesting here is like we have this snake and we also have this half of an apple. Now, the apple, it's obviously, this looks a little bit like a scene from the Garden of Eden, right? And when we look at this apple, it's very representative of an apple from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. When you separate an apple in the middle, the seeds that are inside, oftentimes they look like a pentacle. A pentacle is a symbol that calls in all of the elements right kind of that magician energy but also a pentagram or a pentacle is um a symbol of protection my people perish for a for a lack of knowledge this knowledge this development um tapping into these skills this um power that you have is going to protect you it's going to protect your projects the harvest that you're trying to plant your relationships your peace of mind all of it but the thing about this snake is that it has to shed its skin which in a lot of ways is talking about the ego sometimes like we are stubborn people you're a thick sign i expect this big signs to be stubborn and sometimes we go no i don't want to go back to my abcs because i'm already on prepositions right i understand the frustration of that for you know someone or anything to indicate that like maybe we missed some steps along the way when we know good and well that we were working our ass off but it's also 
also important to remember that you've been working and developing a lot of things all at once while being a person in the world and you've kind of been spinning plates and of course something's gonna get missed there like it just happens to all of us it happens to everyone right and so with the shedding of the skin it feels like it's in relation to the ego not allowing ourselves to be too proud to say maybe I missed a step maybe I do need to learn more right because oftentimes we can become frustrated um, that the process isn't going as quickly as we wanted to the results aren't coming um, in the way that we expected and it's very easy for us to point fingers outwardly right as opposed to kind of pointing them a little bit more reflect reflectively inward and go did I miss a step like did I am I not doing something in a way that is most beneficial right um and the ego will say no I did it I did it right I, it should be like this whereas when you shed that skin you go maybe there is room for a little malleability maybe there is room for education maybe there is room for improvement maybe I should focus in this area just a little bit because then we have this Morgan energy coming up next and it's interesting because she has this crystal ball and she also has this mirror right and next to it we have this card called cloak it's about camouflage now something that's interesting i want you to look at is when you look at this cloak and you look at this tree you notice the patterns are extremely similar here it's almost as if this tree has opened and this is what is inside of it which brings forward like this really interesting idea this is what this mirror and this crystal ball is trying to reflect to you through your intuition that one in many ways when we look at the tree we look at a tree of life right who you are, what you do, everything that encompasses you, where you come from, both from flesh and the divine, all of these things. And in a lot of ways, it feels like your masculine and your feminine, your reflective and intuitive, your active and your building energies have been sitting like outside. It's almost like you've been living this out of body experience, looking in, trying to dissect and figure out why things aren't working out or like I, just why things are the way that they are. And there's something about the fact that when you shed the ego you're actually able to re-embody or step back into your own tree of life feeling really connected to yourself remember that one line let's get back to where we lasted feeling really connected to yourself really connected to your abilities to your power those very subtle psychic impressions you are listening to them you're able to sense them you're feeling really in alignment with your spirit team like your visions for the future are very clear you have actionable steps right the way that you felt once upon a time in your spiritual journey that's you living inside your tree of life and when we kind of pull it back this this mirror here is asking you to recognize like what aspects of your internal tree have been left hollow um because you've been sort of like living on the edge or you've been living outside of your experience trying to overly quantify it as opposed to living it feeling it developing it from the inside it's more it's that feeling of looking on the outside of the house on uh you know how it's built as opposed to also like stepping inside of the framework and going this actually doesn't work here it looks beautiful on the outside but when we step into the house this doesn't feel right does that make sense and with this mirror here from the queen of elfam there's something interesting that wants to come through that if some of you feel perhaps like this person's an energy vampire or this person sending me the evil eye or this thing's against me or this is an opposition or this is an enemy it might actually be yourself there might be aspects of your internal hollow your internal shadow truths that you do not want to acknowledge that have actually been draining your own energy to slow you down enough that you actually have no choice but to sit and to think and to reflect on ways in which you were doing yourself a disservice by not setting boundaries, by not properly caring for your energy, by not being committed enough to your spiritual path, by um, not by being fooled by the illusions that other people put on for you, not setting boundaries and limits with relationships, not addressing things that are sucking your energy like social media or like Debbie Downers or any of that stuff, right? You may in fact be like the biggest energy vampire in your life in your own experience right but when we shed the ego we have the ability to look at ourselves from a higher perspective and go you know what hey it's me i'm the problem 
it's me. And then you have the ability to then pull on your divinities, to pull from your internal resources, to pull in new perspectives that allow you to fill in those gaps and finally start reflecting more of these um, more committed, more engaged, more um, accountable and independent aspects of you, which allows you to mature and develop as a spiritual practitioner, as an individual, as a business owner, as a partner, as a friend, which is what Saturn is trying to get you to do with this grounded approach, with this back to basics, right? Um, Fuck the money candle for a moment, right? It's like, do you know how to transmute energy? Do you know how to be honest with yourself? Do you know how to recognize this isn't good for me? This is draining my energy. This is triggering me into, you know, um, uh, a bad mood. And like, I have to cut that out of my regularly scheduled programming, right? Saturn is about that work. Saturn is about business in the front party in the back like let's get all of this done right before we go and celebrate a little bit too early right and it's the process of being really connected into that development of you as a person very quickly through this spiritual process you end up also obtaining the practical physical professional um, emotional maturity skills that you need to overcome your physical obstacles as well so, and with the fountain tarot, just at the top of the bottom, we don't really need it today, but we have death in reverse, and then we have the four of coins, right? Sort of this refusal to sort of let go of these aspects of ourselves that need to be shed. So that way, like a triple goddess, we can evolve into our next embodiment, which is much more self-possessed. It's much more peaceful. It feels much more capable and is actually able to create the actionable change, the fertility that you're wanting to see in your life. Very good. Very good. So this is what I have for you guys tonight. I really hope that this was helpful. Saturn's coming in with like a little bit of tough love, but it really is to help you like be all that you want to be. So this is your sign, your reading fixed signs. I hope that this was a benefit to you. I love you so much. Again, if you're looking for individual zodiac sign readings, you can find them in our Patreon community. You can also find them on Vimeo. Those links are down for you below. Have a wonderful week. I love you so much and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.